Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. I'd like to send a big shout out to our sponsor, Archery Pass. For all your trad archery products, Archery Pass, making archery's past part of your future. ArcheryPass.com Hey everyone and welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host Mick Chambers. I'm here with Greg from 3D Archery and also uh, Trad Archery 101. Just changed the name. So hey Greg, uh, welcome to the show man. Well, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. How's my audio? Pretty good? Is it okay? I, changed yeah, I hear you fine. Okay, cool. I want just want to make sure that everything's getting captured. So hey, this is really great that you could hop on. I, I really appreciate it. No, no, you know, I meant, I got to apologize. I did plan on doing it, but I'm out, I'm building a 3D course. I'm just so intensely focused. I'm so excited about it. I go to bed dreaming about new shots. I swear to God, it's true. I was in bed the other night and I go, oh, that's going to be hot. I had to get up. My wife's like, what? I go, nothing. I ran in the room, had to write it down. You live, breathe, and eat 3D archery, man. Yeah, you're, you're... I, I really do. I really, you know, if I won the lottery, I'd buy 200 acres and build a court and just build nothing but courses. Yeah, you, you know? and me both. You and me both. And everyone that's listening right now is oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> hey, I great. wouldn't even pay the car off. That can come later. Let's, <laughs> no, let's buy some targets. <laughs> I'm gonna get the really nice ones. Um, hey, so 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 let, let's let's talk a little bit about you and who you are, and um, just a, a quick introduction. How did you get into uh, who who are you, and and how did you get into uh, three? How did you get into traditional archery? Well, I've been doing traditional archery since the '70s as a kid. I think it's a great story. Other people probably don't. <laughs> well, we'll be the judge. Let's go. I grew up in the Midwest, right? So this is the 70s. And one day my dad goes, come on, get your get your rod and reel. You're going fishing with me, you, me and my own, you know, for me, my uncles, me and my brothers. Yeah. And you know, that's a big moment because now you're with the big guys, you know, and I'm like maybe eight to ten. I can't remember the year. And we're out there. And I mean, we went way out in the middle of nowhere. And one of my uncles brought a recurve bow. And he and I go, what's you know, <laughs> what's he doing? And my dad, well, that's bow fishing. And I go, that looks cool. So my dad goes, why, you want to do archery? And I go, oh, I'd love to. He brought me home and he pulled out a Ben Pearson coat, which I still have. And we're in the basement. OK, not the best spot. And that's where I first shot a bow. And then ever since then, you know, he let me shoot it. I still have it. I've been on and off. Like, I didn't shoot much in the Army. I, I shot maybe like four times a year in the Army. Yeah. And then, you know, but after that, but. I don't know what, how many years I started my channel. Me and my wife one day just stumbled onto a 3D shoe. I never seen one or heard of one. And I had so much fun. And it was like six months later, I was watching a YouTube channel or a video and I go, you know what? I should make a channel to promote 3D archery to show people how much fun it is and all the courses in the, around the world. And I, I have been doing it since. That's pretty much the whole thing. And, um, and the, the other channel came by because people wanted me to help them on how to shoot. And I go, well, that's not what my channel is about. And I go, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put it out there. Whatever happens, happens. I'll give you my opinion on what I do. <laughs> doesn't mean it's the right way. doesn't mean it's the wrong way. It's just, just what I do, you know? Yeah, it's you, your, 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 your training videos are no good for me. I mean, you, you, you shoot like really weird i don't know it's you're using your left hand and stuff it's weird it's i just, am i am a lefty naturally okay. but <laughs> another good part of that story the bow my first bow is right-handed because my whole family is right-handed yeah so my dad goes look i'm not buying you a bow and not buying your brother's one he goes so you're gonna have to shoot our bow so till maybe 10 years ago i've always shot right-handed i still shoot pistols right-handed rifles right-handed because in the army they wouldn't let you do anything different back when i was in okay you know left hand was the sign of the devil <laughs> still is still is well, well you know you know the ar has that little triangular block to knock brass off they didn't i had the a1 we didn't have that yeah so people would get hit in the face and i was like well i ain't gonna have that happen i just shot right-handed you know and i still shoot right-handed with my firearms to this day that's so are you right eye dominant then or no 
You know, that's a great question. I get in a lot of trouble on the eye dominance thing because I have scientific studies that says it can switch sides. Really? Yeah. And it's it's a very complicated subject, but I don't think I have a dominant eye. I, that's my best excuse. I am going to end up shooting left-handed down the road here because my vision of my right eye is going. Uh-huh. And, you know, the illuminated sights, they're starting to become blurry. Oh, wow. My left eye, the, the illuminated sights are very clear. I'm hooding it off as long as I can, you know. That, that's I a funny story. I mean, that's unusual. If anyone else has got that, man, leave them in the comments below because I'd love to hear, you know, I know, I know Kavanaugh, is it Jeff? Is it Jeff Kavanaugh uh, was telling me the other day that I think he's he's naturally left-handed uh, or left eye dominant or something, but he shoots both eyes open, so he shoots instinctive, right? So I don't he, right, and I don't see where a dominant eye comes in if you're shooting instinctive, right? Like if you if you, I, again I'm going to get bunch people all mad at me, want to kill me and burn my house down and all that. <laughs> but what does a dominant eye do for you in instinctive archery? You're not aiming. Yeah, right. So all from what I understand, the dominant eye just takes in more information than the non-dominant eye. Right. Now, Jake Kaminsky, you know his channel? Yep, yep, we know Jake. Yep. He has a great video where he says he went to the Olympic Training Center and they all told him their dominant eye, and the people from Bosch said they don't matter. What's your aiming eye? They actually said the aiming eye is what's important, and the aiming eye can be different than your dominant eye. Hmm. And I never heard that before. No, I haven't. So, either. you know, that's an interesting concept. And I do get in trouble when I shoot. How I set, if I'm shooting my with my right hand, I have to close my left eye and then I can open it. And that'll set my dominant eye for me. It's a little trick that I, oh, I don't wow. know if it's real, but yeah. it works in my head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's all that matters for me. 90% of the time, 50% of archery is mental. <laughs> yes what, yes and and you're you're 90 percent correct <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like to throw uh throw some of those those uh, uh yogi berra uh, oh yes they all fit into fit, you would fit in with me and jeff because the stuff we say off camera oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't get us going on our puns and all that you know the dad jokes and all that oh we just go off that's that's trad archery to me. That's what I grew up, you know, doing 3D shoots. It wasn't as serious, you know. There wasn't, um, you know, we weren't keeping score. Although, you know, you kind of mentally were with your buddy, and you're yeah. always you're always taking the piss out of your other buddy, you know. Like, yeah, nice shot in the rump. Yeah, that's a, that's going to be a good one, you know, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, you know. that I agree totally. That's why I love guitar. Yeah, yeah you know, I don't mind competitions. I do them because I really think they do make you better. But if I had a choice, I wouldn't do a single one. You know, I just love shooting. Yeah. And I don't care if it's paper, 3D, long aerial, whatever. I just love to shoot. I love the intense, for me, it's the intense focus, you know? Yeah. When you're a full draw and you're doing it right, the whole world's gone. You know, it's, um, well, you, you've done martial arts. So, Mushin, which many people call empty mind, it's uh, doesn't mean nothing in your head, but you're aware of everything, but you're focused on nothing. Yeah. And I always love that concept. And whether it's shooting a rifle is the same thing. Uh, driving a race car is the same thing for me. You know, archery does it. I just really love that intense focus. That's just this is what I just really enjoy the most. It's funny you say race car racing because you know they hooked a um, and I forget the study and maybe I'll link it if I find it but they were they thought that the human brain could make x amount of uh, decisions at one time right and so they hooked it up to an F1 racer and as he's going through the corner as this guy was going through the corner it shot way over what he thought there were so many decisions and critical thinking that yeah. was happening at that point while he was doing that turn. And I think you're right that we haven't really understood, we don't really understand what the mind does. Yet. And it's, you know, thinking is a bad term because I'm telling you, when I, when I shoot, it's about how I feel. I feel the shot. You know, I'm, everybody takes that, and that's a bad word too, because it's very um, confining. 
but I can feel the proper finger pressure. I feel the proper grip. I feel the proper shoulder. When I'm at full draw, I can feel it in a certain part of my body. And if it's all right, there's that calmness. Mm. But if something's wrong, you know, mm. that that's how I that's how I learn. When there's something wrong, I make note of it. I'm like, well, why did that happen? And I do it, try it again, try to replicate it. I work the opposite way. Instead of working the steps, I work backwards. I try to eliminate the mistakes. <laughs> I find out what I'm doing wrong and try not to do it. I know it's not the best way, but that's how I train. No, I mean, it's whatever, whatever works for you. You're doing awesome. I mean, you, I mean, we have, we have a video proof of you shooting uh, great, great shooting. Right. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're shooting like left-handed, right-handed, uh, what what did you, yeah. you did like a 30 pound bow challenge or was it a 25 bow challenge? 20 pound bow, yeah. 20 I pound love those. bow challenge and you're like nailing the target. It must have been like a big arc like this. I don't know what, but I always wanted to do one with Jeff, but I didn't have time. It was a, a board bow challenge. I know how to build a board. A, you buy red oak from Home Depot yeah. and you put some tape over it and glue it and you make a bow out of it. And I was going to make one that said Home Depot and one that said Lowe's and we're going to go out and shoot against each other. <laughs> you know? I, I, was, I was like, maybe we could call Home Depot and get a shirt from them and a shirt from Lowe's. <laughs> you know, That's never, we never did come through with that one, but I yeah. always thought that'd be fun. And you've yeah. moved and you moved now. So you are down in. Yeah, I'm in the great state of Louisiana, where, by the way, archery sucks. <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, I, 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 look, I'm honest. It's not nothing bad, but. There's no 3D archery courses here. It's not right. There's no clubs. They don't have the clubs that I know of are pretty much dead. They don't have their own property. They use um public land. Oh, okay. And the one that I, I joined, okay, joins a bad word because it's a dead club. They haven't had a meeting in years. They haven't had a shoot in years. The course is dilapidated. And I found it took me months. I got here in June. I just Last month, I got a hold of the guy and I was like, look, I'm going to redo your course for you. I'm going to spend the money. All mm -hmm. I ask is give me a free hand. I go, I'm telling you, I'll make your world class course. And that's what I've been doing. And, you know, it's amazing how you get pushback. People, oh, I don't know if you should be doing that. No one's worked on this thing in years. Oh, oh. And you got a guy willing to do it for free and you're complaining. Yeah, the people you know? don't change. And they, they don't do archery here in the summer. It ends by July. They claim it's the heat, which I can understand. Yeah. But it doesn't start again until like February. They only do archery from like February to May. And that's it. Well, you know, it's got to be like you're in the, the heat and you're in the, the, the mosquitoes and all the bugs and all that shit. As long as you do it in the morning, you're fine. Yeah. I cool. mean, look, yeah. I'm out here today and it was like 48 degrees and they had... People had scarves on and hats. I'm in a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, we're like, what? What you ain't you cold? I go, we don't see this till like April. <laughs> you know, I'm happy. <laughs> so, so what are you what 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 are you shooting right now? What's your favorite bow to shoot right now? Oh what do you if you're gonna go pick up a bow right now and go, hey, I'd be the stealth hunter. Okay, you're a stealth hunter. Okay. Yeah, it's a it comes under different names. I think it's made by Jung Singh or somebody like that. Eric from Hitman got it for me. And I don't know. It's just for some reason it seemed very stable. Like other bows, I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. It's just the pressure in my hand feels very different because. It has the, like a black widow, the limbs are mounted on the backside. Yeah. So the pressure seems to be farther back than up than up front. And I just, I'm just naturally accurate with it. I did build one that I loved that I was shooting, but I'm trying to stop from doing it because I want to make a new version of it. And I'm just too, I got so much going on right now. I can't, I do love shooting the takedown bows that I build. Those are fun because when you hit a bullseye, I just smile every time because I don't know what I'm doing as a boyer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I built some like but this one that I shot. It looks really cool. I got to, I built the the grip backwards. Okay. I I took the the center of the bow is not in the grip; it's on the shelf. I made two different angles on the limbs. I did a whole bunch of stuff just to see what would happen, and the thing shoots lights out. 
I am so amazed by it. So I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. I'm violating all these rules <laughs> and this thing shoots. And that that's one of the things that led to my, my epiphany is it ain't the bow. It's me. Yeah. You know what? I quit worrying about equipment. It's me. I'm going to get my form down and I don't care. You throw me any bow, any Euro combination within reason, you know, and I, I can start hitting the target. Give me a couple arrows to figure out how that bow shoots and I'll start hitting the target. You know, and it's, I don't, it's, I don't think it's hard. It's just, you know, I think people stress too much. Like I'm a very, okay, we've got to put cavats in it. Anti-tuning. I'm not anti-tuning, okay. but I am. You should only tune when you're ready. Okay. I know people that tune when they first start, but your form's all over the place. You're getting bad readings. Yeah. You know, start, start getting a group before you tune. That's all I say. And man, the hate I get from that. Such great advice. Such great advice. I mean, you got, I mean, we, and I think Schneider was on my, you know, on the show just like uh, two weeks ago. And he was saying, if you can't group, I can't help you with tuning. Right. So you can't and that's where I get a lot of fights in my um, trade archery videos is I'm telling, I say that to people, look, if you got a group this big, I don't care. Tuning ain't going to, how can you tell what's, the arrow causing it or you causing it? Yeah, exactly. You've got a group this big? Yeah, now you know. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you know. Now it's time to tune. You know, and I learned that from paper. When you start hitting those tight groups on paper, it's time to tune. Mm -hmm. You know, now, now that makes a difference. But even with that, it's still, like you said, it's over 90% me. You know, I, I think a tuned arrow, it... um more efficient it's faster it has more penetration i don't know about the forgiving part mm -hmm. you know i think a out of tune arrow is a little more forgiving to a certain point okay. but then but then when you hit that other point it's really bad yeah like i was out here the other day shooting in high winds and my arrow was sideways and i was like oh and i hit the x i was like how did i do that I mean, you know, when you can watch the arrow go down the range sideways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, so you what know? do you, so you, so you would have this, sorry, what was the name of that bow again? Give me one more. One it's more. called the Stealth Hunter. I love oh. it because I named it. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, Eric okay. didn't have a name for it. And I go, it looks like the Stealth Bomber. Call it the Stealth Hunter. And he goes, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it's, yeah, it's on the backside. Like a black. Yeah, and it's all black and, it's, you know, the black got the little V shape. So, okay, so that is what poundage and what hand are you shooting? Uh, I use, it's left-handed and it's 30 pounds. I use 30 pounds for 3D because I ain't trying to kill nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. My The hunting bows I have are like 45 to 50. Okay. And those are, are old Ben Pearsons. I love shooting those. Do you do you ever get out hunting or no? You got time? To do I haven't hunted in years. It's yeah. with my job now. I work weird. It's called a 223 schedule. Okay. And it reverses every week. So one week I got two days on, two days off, three days on. Mm -hmm. And we work 14 hour days. Wow. So on my days off, I'm very cramped for time. I got to, you know, do this, got to get this done, this done. Yeah. So my time off is like really wrecked. And I would love to go down here. I guess boar hunting is pretty big. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know? Yeah. What do you, so do you mind me asking what you do for a living? I work at um, a nuclear power plant. I work in security. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's oh yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the plant I was in New York. Yeah. In five years there, I got an exposure of 2.6 millirems. Doesn't mean a whole lot to you, right? Yeah. But in six months here, I got 19 millirems. Oh, no. It sounds <laughs> yeah. good. It feels like you need to be wearing your suit. Like, so well, you, you put the little badge on, right? And that's oh, yeah, I have to. It's a dissymmetry. Got to wear that all the time. Yeah. Now, the, the, the cool part of it is, is old people don't absorb radiation as fast as young people. Okay. <laughs> so you absorb it when your cells reproduce, and the older you get, the less your cells reproduce. So I actually don't get a whole lot in because I'm getting old. <laughs> I always tell the young hey, kids, you're right. screwed. Yeah. I'm getting <laughs> yeah. old. This is great. Yeah, one of, finally got a good thing about getting old. Hey, so okay. you, you think that you think that vision thing has anything to do with the amount of radiation you've been putting in your body? <laughs> you know, that could be. I don't, I don't um <laughs> don't say that. I, Nuclear power is great for the for the world. So I mean, uh I love it. I used to work in oh not work. I used to live in really close to when I was in Canada, I lived 
close to Pickering, which is this, a nuclear power plant as well, right up there near New York too. So um, the lot, guys loved working there. People do you know what the it. most, well, it's really good pay. The pay's obnoxious. Yeah. Do, do you know what, do you, this would always blew my mind when I first got, do you know how nuclear power creates electricity? Yeah, through steam. Yeah, all it is, they boil water, boil water send yeah. it into a turbine and make it. I thought it'd be like Star Trek, you know, some more core <laughs> stuff and all this. Yeah. No, nothing like that. I go, I go, that's it. You're boiling water. Boiling water, yeah. Yeah, yeah water. that's all they're doing. And it turns a turbine and the turbine giant armatures. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> I was so disappointed. I was like, <laughs> I, I thought it'd be like really fantastic space stuff. Nope. No, 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 no. No, no, just boiling water. <laughs> Hey, so, hey, all right, let's get off of nuclear power. Let's get back to your nuclear uh, archery skills. So thank you, first of all. I want to say thanks from the community to you. I don't know how many people say thanks to you publicly, but, you know, if it wasn't for you, I think you've brought way more people into archery than even some of the big name archery guys. You know, like you, so many people watch your channel. So many people watch you. They get excited about archery. Even if they're being negative, they're still doing archery, you know, and you get the haters are the haters, but you got a lot of great right. following there. And I appreciate your kind words. And I've, you know, that's what makes it for me. Like I take a lot of heat for what I say. Yeah. And I always tell people, you, you made your decision before you listened to me, but uh, it's the ones I get people to write things like that. And that, that's what keeps me going. I mean, I'm really happy about that. You know, and I, I'm not, it's not about me. That's the biggest thing. It's about, you know, the fun of 3D archery. I just have so much, I was out shooting today and I just, the whole time I had a smile on my face. I was laughing, missed the target on two of them. I don't know what I was doing, but I was laughing each time I did because I can't believe I did what I, two misses and they landed boom, right next to each other. So whatever <laughs> I did, I did the same thing, twice, but I You're couldn't consistent. figure out what it was I was doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm super consistent at being terrible, um, but yeah, it's 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 amazing that you've got such a following. And again, it is all great content. Everything you've put out, there is nothing in there that I would go, no, this guy's nuts. He's out of, but you're. It's all really really good, and it's all really and it's your you obviously your high energy and you know you bring that energy to the sport. And I I, I feel terrible actually that you're telling me that you're in Louisiana and you're away from these 3D courses. Because you, your yeah. courses, like you would go out and visit all these. So for people who haven't watched your, which most of everyone's watched you by now, you go out and visit all these different 3D courses. I'm like, yeah, when's the next one coming? Yep, when's so the next one coming? Where I lived in New York, mm -hmm. in a 50 mile radius of my house, there's 33 different 3D courses. Fantastic. And we would have multiples every weekend. So I'd look at the schedule and I had to make my mind up. You're know, like, well, that's a nice course, but this course is much more fun. It down here, it's just, it, it, that's why I'm building this course on public land with these guys, because that's where I'm going to be. I've been telling them, I go, look, we'll have a place for everybody to come out and shoot. You know, it's pretty cool. And they can go fishing. There's all two ponds there. So, so now you make targets too, right? Yeah, I make, I made those because targets are expensive. They are. They're and they're made for trad archers and they're just, you know, like Jeff Krugel, he said, trade archers will shoot anything. You know, like we all shoot a stump. Yes, we will. You know, put a, <laughs> you know, put put this out. We'll take those little rubber ducks they shoot at. And I go, well, you know, I learned how to make a target, and I realized it's not that hard. So I made mean, like right now, my bunny rabbit sells well. I have a skull. I'm just bought a, um, an owl and a falcon. I try to keep my prices around, you know, under a hundred bucks. Yeah. And they last. I mean, my beer bottle targets have been out and they've been shot by compounds and everybody. I'm, I'm amazed at how well these things hold up and I'm not making a killing off them. I'm just no. trying to pay for the material and shipping, you know, because. But you, they're you know, like me. Well, if, if you're it, like me, there's no 3D courses. What are you going to shoot? Yeah. And your, your targets are fun, right? I mean, they're unique. There's some unique targets in there so that's that's pretty awesome man and it's nice that you're finding something that you know you can 
give back to the community, but you can also make a little bit of money because honestly, um, you know, I know that your channels and YouTube, you know, this doesn't pay the rent, right? So no, we, no. Do this, we do this for the love of it. We do it for the love of it, you know? So, I, and, and it's helping out the community. And so that's like, yeah. you ever seen a channel dude perfect? Yes. Yeah. They made 22 million last year on Jeez. YouTube. Yeah. And they're shooting archery stuff too. They're doing some yeah. archery stuff. 22 million. And I look at my wife, I go, what did I do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're dude 3d perfect uh most yeah, of the time. Yeah. Every time you go around that course i'm like always envious i'm like how is he not nervous when he's got two cameras on uh he's shooting and then he's 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 knocking the 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 middle out of the target i'm like you know, that's, that's pretty good that is an interesting point and i think it i, I think that really helped me because i do show all my mistakes i don't if i yeah. What you see in those videos, that's how I shot that day. I don't do second takes and things. I I, I make it a point to show my misses, that's, you know, because, you know, we all miss. There's nothing wrong with missing. It's no. totally fine. You know, it, like I tell people, I'm not making less money. My wife's not going to divorce me. My cat's not going to hate me because I missed. So I missed. It's big. Who cares? So I make I make a point to show that, you know, and but having the cameras there, it's really neat because my mind's going one way talking and now it's got to go into that. Mm -hmm. And I've, I found that actually translates pretty well over to help me in targets because, you know, you got all this stuff going on and all yeah. of a sudden, boom, now I got to get into this. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I, I have to say doing all that filming, which is a pain in the butt because yeah. I, I have nobody out there with me. It's just me with a tripod with a two camera mounts on it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's amazing how quick I can get through a 3D course with no camera. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I know. Me too. It's amazing how fast I can get up in my stand without my cameras and all that other bullshit. Yeah. With me. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't want to do this anymore. But I think, you know, it helps the community. I personally, I think, again, we're not doing it for money, but, you know, it's fun to help the community and say, yeah, hey, this is what Mick's doing or this is what Greg's doing. Yeah. He's not hitting every target. I, you know, I, the pressure's off me a little bit or I put the pressure on me to be better than that dude or better than him. That's good. Then if that's what floats your boat, man. I think it's it. a good one for, you know, for people, one, you know, like all the Demers in the world and the Joel Turners and Paul Helms, who I love, um, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, these guys are awesome shots, mm -hmm. but they're not the average person. You know, they're Super people go up and they say, well, he's always nailing tens. Dude, I don't nail a 10 every time. <laughs> All right. So, you know what? You can be in the same boat as me. I'm an average guy. I knew nothing special about me. And they see my shooting. They go, oh, yeah, I can do that. You know, hell, I can <laughs> miss just like that. <laughs> I can lose an arrow just like he did. Yeah. You, you're setting the bar. You set it at, you yeah, first you set it at, low, you know, set like it Mick, then set it at Greg, and then set it at Dwayne Martin <laughs> level. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. I totally get that. It's yeah. like the A10, you know, go ugly early. That way you won't be disappointed. That's you know, right. miss early and often. So when you make it, you feel better. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> That's a great analogy. But, but isn't it, well, isn't it true though, when you first started, you lost it. I lost a ton of arrows. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was buying arrows so I seen like every week. Yeah. Now I'm I'm gotten pretty good. One, I am very determined to find the darn things. <laughs> <laughs> They're expensive. <laughs> you know, that's, that's twenty bucks. I'm I'm spending my time out there. But uh, you yeah. Know, then you get these. Then you get these dummies like Matt Yaka who who posts on Instagram. Yeah, I, I broke an arrow because I, I Robin Hood it. I Robin Hood in too many arrows. I'm like, stop, stop, yeah. stop. Well, man. all right. I I do <laughs> I have to do say I am guilty of that. Yeah, you too. The you Predator too. 2 arrows I was using on an indoor, I Robin Hooded two of them in one night. And then in the next week, I Robin Hooded another one. And I was like, look, this is getting ridiculous. And I wasn't trying to Robin Hood them. So I went to skinnier arrows. That cured the whole problem. I haven't Robin Hooded one. <laughs> That's, that's awesome uh yeah or pin knocks or something like that yeah it's just it's a pain in the ass everyone's like oh wow that's really cool no no one likes it no no, no archer likes it, that. it it is cool the first time you can see mine in the corner yes the i see bottom it right one, i'm sorry the top one is the first robin hood i ever did okay the bottom one is my proudest robin hood i was at etar and this kid just did a tom clum seminar and we're out in the practice range and there's like a lot of people out there yep and I go, well, tell me what Tom Clum taught you. You know, what did you take from it? And he told me, they go, I, I, I go, stop, stop, stop. I go, walk me through it. 
So he walked me through it and I shot, I mean, I put it right in the bullseye. It was a beautiful shot. And I go, ah, that was me. That wasn't, no, no, I, I, I you know, I, I corrected, you know, I, I made an adjustment. I go, do it again. And I did exactly what he said. And I did that Robin Hood. And that thing's like six inches deep into it. Woo. So that's dead I was center. Like, dead center. I was, yeah. I was like, I go, I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm a believer. <laughs> you know, I, but that one, I had all these people watching. Tom Clum is like 10 feet away. He was laughing at me. Cause you know, he heard me say, oh, it wasn't him. It was me. <laughs> and I told so, him later, I go, hey, you owe me 20 bucks. Because <laughs> I just pulled the back one out. I only owe you yeah. 10. You know, you know, I was going to do that. I am that cheap. You know, but yeah, that's my, those are my, my two Robin Hoods. I just love those. The first one was sentimental because, you know, that first time you do it, you're like, ooh, 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 ooh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can see the first one's crooked. Yeah, yeah. The second one's dead on straight. It's yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's nice to have that. Nice that you saved that. I probably would have just been. Yeah, that's it. I'm not good at saving stuff like that or doing anything like that. Or, or I, I get I get stuff on film, but that's about it. And then, like we just talked about, it's a pain in the ass. And hey, I don't know. Do you save your footage? I don't. I delete. So yeah, as soon as I, I publish it, be, I I'm dump it. Done. I'm gonna dump this. Yeah, and I'll right. grab it off of YouTube little clips. If I I got to go back to YouTube and grab my little clips if I needed it. You know. Yeah, okay. I, Okay, good. I know I'm, I don't mind as soon as I'm done publishing. No, I will admit, look, I, I'm I like to think I'm tech savvy, but I never watched YouTube on my TV. Okay. But I got ATT down here and I did that. That is awesome. Yeah, you said that. <laughs> I think you said that in a video. I forget. It is incredible <laughs> what you can see. I'm like, did. why didn't I do this earlier? So yeah. now when I make my videos, I'm actually thinking about my TV. The big screen, the, the big screen. Head. Yeah. And like, what, what would look good on my TV here? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of funny because I go, some of the videos I make, I'm like, okay, I'll make them. And then I'm like, oh, it looks good on my phone. Yeah, good enough, publish it. And then I get it on my TV. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, no. That That's looks terrible. The problem with, I use um Sony Handycams and my yep. LCD is like really tiny and I can't see squat with it. So I'm, you know, I'm just pretty much guessing. I just tried to get basic frames and then do that. You know, so YouTube, I only used to use one camera and I had so many people, you know, I used to take a picture and they go, oh, that's not what you did. You know, you, you're lying. I'm like, why would I lie? I'm gonna, I have nothing some to prove. Just, some people just get it like that. So that's why I brought in the second one, just to show the naysayers. And then this one guy goes, well, you're only showing a close up. I can't win for losing. You know, I go look. I could, I could do too far away, but that's sort of like redundant, don't you think? You know? So I know, I know this is getting into creator content and discussion and stuff. But hey, if you are a creator and you're listening to this, are you watching it? Man, these are great. This is great information. I think uh -huh. that more people should publish shoot video. I look too. Put this out there. If you go to a 3D shoot and you film it, send me the fo the footage and I'll put it on my channel. There you go. I want to I want to expose the clubs. And I, I've had that one guy. I had a, two people do it. A guy from Norway, which was pretty funny because, I mean, how many people are in the whole country? And then um, I think a guy from Germany sent me one. But, yeah, and I tell people, you got to send it to me. I'll, just give me the raw footage. I'll cut it. I'll do all the work. This, so. this thing right here in my hand, I'm telling you, man, these things take yep. fantastic fantastic video some you of them are the newer ones the newer, yeah, newer ones are just lights out they're so good they're so good so get yeah. if you're a content creator you were actually send it off to greg man uh, contact them where can they contact you at they can contact you on instagram right instagram facebook youtube in my email you got it um i also use 3d3 spelled spelled out t-h-r-e-e-d-r tree at outlook.com is my uh okay. Okay. Email but, for that. But if they want to just kind of, if they're forgetting, they're, it, uh, go to Instagram, search 3D Archery. Greg, Gregory will come up and then you can, yeah. you can hit you up on there so they you can, they can. Yeah, uh, I'm happy to do that. Give me, give me a piece of advice for a beginner. Someone, someone starting out in archery. How, how just can they shoot. Do? Just shoot. Don't worry. Just get out there and start slinging arrows. You'll learn it. You'll pick it up. You'll figure it out. You know, we're all, we're, you know, pretty advanced people. Yeah. Most of us are somewhat intelligent. I mean, we can spell our names. I mean, uh, 
but just get in, just get out there and shoot arrows. You know, the hardest thing for a beginner is they don't know what they want to do. Mm. So if you want to do target archery, you're going to go this way. If you just want to hunt, you're going to go this way. If you want to do 3D, you're going to go this way. And that's what they don't know. And they won't know it until they do it. Right. You know, buy a cheap bow. This is mainly for parents. I know if they're listening, they already do it. But parents don't want to do it because the money. And, you know, 300, 400 bucks for a bow is pretty expensive. Buy a cheap bow, get some cheap arrows, get everything cheap. See if the kid wants to do it. See if you can get the excitement, then make the commitment. Yeah. You know, I, in my karate school, I can't tell you how many kids came in. They thought they're going to be Ninja Turtles within the first week. And, you know, they quit because they weren't doing backflips and all that in the first week. You know, and I, I see that in archery, you know, and that's the other thing. The biggest tip I'll tell people is don't rush it enjoy the process you know people you you've seen them they do it they'll tell you i shoot 200 arrows every day dude that's a lot but you're gonna burn yourself out you're gonna wear your body out you know i didn't get good overnight i'm steady progress steady pro and but i enjoy the ride and i learned that from teaching martial arts i watched so many kids come in the gifted kids would quit the gifted people get bored and quit you see that with the compounds. They get so accurate so fast. That's why they come to trad. Yeah. And then they, 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 they don't do well with this. So they go over to the bear bowl because it's closer. And then they get good with that. And then what do they do? Oh, I don't shoot anymore. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to enjoy it for the lifetime. It's, it's so it true. I mean, yeah, it's so true. I mean, you're, you're exactly right. It, this is, I, I'm just going to say it. Archery is, is, is part of my lifestyle. It's yeah. part of your lifestyle. It's part of my, any of us that have been around for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, you know, even if it's five years, it's now part of your lifestyle. Um, and we understand exactly what you just said. We understand that yeah. we're, we're happy, content with that. Some of the new kids coming in, you know, they want to be like, hey, how do I get good really, really fast? And yeah, I they want to be Katniss Aberdeen or whatever it is in 30 seconds. And that's okay. They can be. Some of those guys are really good. They can get really good, but you but you do have to put the energy in. And it's not like riding a bike. I can't just put my bow down today, pick it up in a month, and go, yeah, I'm gonna be exactly the same as I was today. <laughs> now oh, wait, you know. No, no, no. Yeah, that that is, you know, it's um they call it a perishable skill. It's perishable. And it very much is that, you know. And but like you're talking about the gifted kid, I'm telling you, nine times out of 10, a gifted kid will quit within a few months because he's so good, it's no longer a challenge for him. Yeah. You know, or he's like, or he hits that, that plateau, which we all hit, and he gets so frustrated, he quits. But the kid, you know, or, or the guy, girl, whatever it is, the person that little steps, you know, just little steps, and you'll just keep going. And one day you'll get there. I understand, you know, we want to get there quick, but you got enjoy the process you know just i that's i love the process i live for the process you so know, one of my I'm favorite out. one of my favorite tips to give uh beginners is is go out and watch greg on his channel yeah. between one <laughs> one and uh like learn what not so, to do <laughs> no no there's some great there's some great advice there great tips and all this wisdom that you're hearing today he shares it freely on his channel uh it's amazing we really appreciate you man um uh, we're going to cut it off, but, but I think, man, there's, there's more to it. Just go to the channel, go to his channel, go take a look at what he's doing. Some amazing stuff there. Uh, thank you again for joining us today, Greg. You know, pleasure's all mine. Appreciate it. All right, everyone take care, be safe. Uh, again, stay positive, test negative. We'll talk to you soon.